Hey, Sunday, June 10th, 2018. And the caption says, President Trump arrived late for a discussion on gender equality at G7 meeting, which he left early for talks with North Korea. Now, the New York Times headline says that in Trump's administration, science is unwelcome, so is advice. Hmm. Well, of course, New York Times is a hate Trumper, so of course they're going to say stuff like this. But here's the interesting thing. That's, it has to do with a science advisor. And the article that I'll read in a moment here talks about this. So their spin is, is has to do with science advisor. I would say that Trump is rejecting a scientism propagandist. A scientism propagandist. Here, let me read what this says here. As President Trump prepares to meet Kim Jong-un of North Korea to negotiate denuclearization, a challenge that has been bedeviled the world for years, interesting choice of words, he is doing so without the help of a White House science advisor or senior counselor trained in nuclear physics. Mr. Trump is the first president since 1941 to not to name a science advisor a position created during World War II to guide the Oval Office on technical matters ranging from nuclear warfare to global pandemics. So that's where I get the concept of he's not naming a scientism propagandist. Uh, as a businessman and president, Mr. Trump has probably been guided by his instincts. Nevertheless, people who have participated in past nuclear negotiations say the absence of such high-level expertise could put him at a technical disadvantage in one of the weightiest diplomatic matters of his presidency. You need to have an empowered senior science advisor at the table, said R. Nicholas Burns, who led negotiations with India <clears throat> over a civilian nuclear deal during the George W. Bush administration. You can be sure the other side will have that. Uh, quickly on a side note, uh, former science advisor, um, Eric P. Holdren, he's the guy that wrote this manifesto book that's a government textbook, really, that explains that, uh, yeah, we're going to put, like, you know, fluoride and other chemicals in the water to sterilize and dumb people down as a way to control people and, and that kind of, it's, it's a whole, it's called Eco-Science is his book, and it totally explains it, you, disguises the actual plan using a whole bunch of technical mumbo-jumbo, but when you put it in plain speak, it's exactly what I just said. <clears throat> the lack of traditional science, oh, and Eric P. Holdren is also the guy who, when he first was named as the uh, science advisor, we call, they call him a science czar, uh, he's the guy where a reporter had said, because uh, he, he, he was talking about, uh, well, you know, maybe we should look at putting, you know, particulates in the upper, uh, you know, atmosphere to, uh, you know, uh, combat global warming, warming. And some reporter got up and said, oh, so you're saying that the conspiracy theorists are, are right about chemtrails? All of a sudden, he got silent. Someone come up, whispered in his ear, and he says, oh, "I just been told that there was a meeting that uh, I have to get to. Uh, this, uh, you know, uh, question and answer session is adjourned. Uh, have a good day." And he left. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, back to this. The lack of traditional scientific advisory leadership in the White House is one example of a significant change in the Trump administration. The marginalization of science in shaping United States policy. Uh, there is no chief scientist at the State Department where science is central to foreign policy matters such as cybersecurity and global warming. Look, if they really cared about cybersecurity, they would be putting a Catherine Albrecht or even uh, um, uh, the uh, McAfee, you know, uh, McAfee in, uh, you know, cybersecurity. Um, nor is there a so, uh, chief scientist in the Department of Agriculture. Uh, Mr. Trump... <laughs> Hey, we can get our USDA surveyor as uh, the head of the department. Uh, Mr. Trump last year nominated Sam Clovis, a former talk show host with no specific background to the position, but he withdrew his name and no new nomination has been made. Um, these and other decisions have consequences for public health and safety and the economy, both the Interior Department and the RN. Continue on page 20. If you want to read the rest of the article, you can just, you know, probably go to NewYorkTimes.com. I haven't even read the rest of the article, but I just thought it was interesting. And uh, so, I don't know, it just kind of gives me still a little bit of hope that maybe, you know, the Flat Earthers are really going to change this stuff around. 
All right, keep it flat, everyone. Uh, this is Bill Keith, the tiny Earl guy, saying keep it flat.